adiabatic means an equation that deals with heat that has not had time to disperse. And we use it as well in thermonuclear uh, reactions when it comes to designing thermonuclear weapons. But here, it's used for safety of uh, designed circuits. Whatever the combination that we are using, we need to work out that that CPC, during the period at which the fault current of hundreds of amps flows down it before ADOS, automatic disconnection of supply happens, whether the heat buildup in that cable is going to be enough to damage the insulation of that cable. The way we do it is by working out, first of all, what the fault current is going to be in our designed, um, in our designed circuit. So let's go back to that 9 kilowatt, 25 meter circuit that we had just now. 25 meters, 9 kilowatts equals IB. We used 10 millimeter twin and earth with a 4 millimeter CPC. Was there any other information we remembered about it? The voltage drop was something like 4%. What we need to work out now is our R1, R2 of this circuit. Remember we're in the design stage and we need to work out how much current that CPC can take and whether it's enough that it doesn't overheat. Well, We've got 25 meters of the 10 millimeter CPC. The first thing we're going to do is look at legs 11 in this book, which I call legs 11. It's table India one. Table India one. Table India one looks like this. Down the down the first column, we have a list of sizes of conductors, from one millimeter through to 35 millimeter here. But we also have the column for the protective conductor size. If we use the column for protective conductor size, then we don't have to do a calculation of out and back. It's already been done. But if we choose one of the lines here, which has no protective conductor size, because we're just coming back in the same size as the line conductor, then we do have to double it for the cable route. And what we have here are the resistances of that amount of copper, cross-sectional area, distance, worked out both for the out journey and back in the same size conductor, which we have to do ourselves by multiplying it by two, and also for out in our size of conductor and back in a smaller CPC, in which case they've worked out the sum for us. A 10 millimeter, with a four millimeter CPC, they've worked out the out and the back routes for us, so we don't need to double it. It's 6.44 milli ohms per meter. We can now work out from that by multiplying it by 25, the total resistance of R1 plus R2. So we've got a very low resistance in that system. 0.1610. Oh. We add our ZE to that. Let's give ourselves a ZE of 0 0.2. That's 0 0.361 ohms. How do we get a fault current from that? Using V equals IR, we divide 230 by that number. and we get 637 amps. Well, I can tell straight away that 300, 637 amps from these time current tables, which we can find, the time current curves, which we can find here in figure three alpha four, in our time current curves is that an overcurrent protective device of a B40 will disconnect between 0.1 seconds and 5 seconds, given 200 amps. If we look at the 40 amp curve, 
and take it down on the logarithmic scale to 600 amps, we're already off the scale. Electromagnetic mechanism in the overcurrent protective device has instantaneously disconnected the supply. So we take time in the adiabatic equation as 0.1 seconds. S equals square root of I squared, which was 637, times time over, and we were using the 90 degree multi-core thermo setting cable. So K is going to not be 115, but it's going to be 143 instead. Answer to this is S equals 1.41 millimeters. So we could get away with a CPC of 1.41 millimeters. We've got 637 amps we've worked out from the R1, R2 and the ZS, and that is plenty to disconnect us within 0.2 seconds, 0.1, 0.2 seconds. And that means that we only need 1.41 millimeter cable as our CPC. That's all for this week. And next week we'll cover this and we'll carry on with the building ready.